All right, thanks very much for that then, Becky. So yeah, now in the next 15 minutes or so, I'll be giving you a quick run through of the port market outlook for next year. So yeah, first we're just gonna start off with what was happening in the market last year before we move on to the outlook for 2018. So uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, in contrast to the previous few years, pig prices were much improved in 2017. The SPP was actually over 150 pence per kilogram for almost every week and peaked at just under 165 pence per kilogram in August, which was a record high for the series. As you can see, EU prices were similarly strong. However, they did decline more sharply than the UK in uh, more recent months. Now, the higher prices have been supported by uh, tightening in the supply situation. As you can see in the first half of the year when prices were rising, production was falling back both here and on the continent. Now, these reductions were not unexpected and followed from previous contractions that we saw in the breeding herd, both here and across Europe, reflecting the previously poor period of profitability. However, as we moved into the second half of the year, we can see that production started to pick up again. Now, this was both here and eventually in the EU, though we haven't got the full year official figures in yet. Uh, and this was because the improved price situation since around mid 2016 has encouraged some re-expansion. And these increasing supplies have started to put downwards pressure on the pig price in recent months. The EU market as a whole has also seen export volumes falter somewhat um, last year, with shipments down around 10% in the first 10 months of the year compared to the previous year, as exports to China were back by more than a third. Chinese import demand in general declined last year, as their domestic production began to recover, and also their domestic prices declined, which reduced their import demand. But for now, if we continue to focus on the UK supply situation, we can see that the official data suggests imports were up a little bit last year. Now, this was partly driven by increases for processed products and sausages, which was likely supported by some growth that we've seen in consumption in these areas. And imports of these products have also been generally moving up over the past five years. The official data also suggests that there was a further 5% increase in the fresh frozen pork imports from the already elevated 2016 figure. Now, some modest increase in these imports is quite reasonable, especially considering that we were tight on supplies earlier in the year. And then in the latter part of 2017, EU prices were falling more sharply than the UK prices, increasing the relative competitiveness of the imported product. However, we do still think that the fresh frozen pork import figure is somewhat overstated compared to pre-2016 levels. This follows from our records of Danish imports rising sharply from the middle of 2016 and remaining around this new elevated level since then. So you can see that uh, effect on that green line on the chart on the right there. Um, we do not think that this change really reflects the reality of the situation, as it would mean that there was a lot more pork on the market now than there has been historically, which wouldn't really match with the significant improved price situation that we've got lately, especially considering that Kantar retail data suggests that pork consumption has been generally declining. Danish export figures also don't reflect this trend and with Danish production declining in recent years it's doubtful whether they actually have the supplies available to increase our imports to that extent. So although HMRC are currently looking at this, for now I've been estimating the UK import figure based on the export volumes from our key uh, pork suppliers. And you can see this volume as the grey blue line on the same chart. Now, you can see that this figure is traditionally larger than the UK import figure, but until recently it was following the same trend. So it should allow us to consistently assess the changes in import volumes compared to previous years. Using the figures available so far, estimated UK fresh frozen pork imports come out around 2% higher than the previous year in 2017. So this would mean that overall UK pig meat imports would be virtually stable on the year. This is because that the bacon shipments have actually declined by quite a noticeable 9%. And this is because more bacon is now being produced in the UK instead, 
which is more cost effective in general. So now, if we move on to the demand side of things, starting with the domestic market, the 52 week picture in general shows that the fresh frozen pork shipment uh, demand was down around 1% in 2017. However, if you look at the chart on the left, you can see that it's not actually such a negative picture because you can see that in the second half of the year, pork sales have actually started to show a rising trend. With retail prices also rising, the value of the market has been boosted even further. So it does look like the demand for pork has turned a bit of a corner and has been improving. The HDB midweek marketing, uh, midweek wheels marketing campaign may have supported this, um, and this will hopefully have to enhance the development in the coming weeks and months. So international demand has also been good, and export volumes were up last year. Fresh frozen pork shipments actually reached the highest level since 1998. This is particularly positive given that supply constraints earlier in the year were limiting. So the growth in the fresh frozen shipments, which as you can see, make up the majority of our exports, was primarily this uh, last year driven by trade within the EU, and in particular to Denmark, where the product is probably going to be re-exported. However, the fresh frozen pork trade with China, which was the key driver of uh, our export growth in the previous year, also gained a modest 1%. And this is particularly encouraging for UK product because, as I previously mentioned, the Chinese pork imports overall declined by about a quarter last year. Other developing markets have also um, boosted our exports last year, such as the Philippines and South Korea. So now we've established that, we can move on to look at the UK outlook for 2018 and beyond. So. The forecast for slaughterings is based on the size of the UK breeding herd and the expected level of sire productivity. For June 2017, we've put the breeding herd as increasing modestly on year earlier levels by around 1%. Uh, so this reflects the increase recorded by the DEFRA census. And an increase would be expected as producer profitability had improved significantly over the prior 12 months although producers were reported to be investing more heavily into their buildings and infrastructure rather than significant expansion at the time. However, it is important to note that we have estimated the size of the breeding herd since December 2015, as in we have revised downwards the DEFRA figure, as you can see in the chart on the left here. And this is because the DEFRA census seems to be somewhat overstated. The official census numbers show that the sow herd increased throughout the period of poor profitability, which is unlikely, especially given that we did see production fall back in late 2016 and early 2017. Site productivity is expected to continue moving up broadly in line with what the long term trend is, although we have taken account of some reports that it might perhaps increase at a slower rate than is normal as people focus more on reducing their antibiotic usage. Nonetheless, combining these two factors, the original forecast that we produced in October showed that 2018 slaughterings are expected to be about 2% above year earlier levels. Now, since then, we've had the quarter four throughputs in for 2017, and these came out slightly higher than we had expected. Now, this could be due to our estimate of the breeding herd size being slightly low in which case we might continue to see slaughterings come in slightly ahead of the forecast level, and perhaps even grow in the region of 3% this year. Of course, it could also at least partly be due to the herd performing better than expected. And while this could continue, a consistent upward trend in this performance would be perhaps a little less certain. The December census results and Agrisoft's quarter four side productivity figures may shed some light on uh, which has been most in, the most important factor when they are released. However, while there is a risk that we might see slaughterings generally higher than the current forecast this year, we believe there are downside risks to the quarter two forecast. And this comes from reports of difficulties with seasonal infertility last year, which will start to impact on numbers coming forward around the April-May time. As such, we might see that the quarter two slaughter does not reach the levels previously expected. So 
So if we move now onto the production forecast, the slaughterer's forecast is combined with the anticipated carcass weights to produce this. Production growth is expected to outpace the increase in slaughterings as carcass weights continue to rise on the year. This is the long-term trend reflecting improvements in genetics and a drive towards heavier finishing weights. If we just quickly refer back to quarter four again, we can see that although production was slightly higher than expected, this was not to the same extent as slaughterings. This is because carcass weights averaged lower than expected, and as you can see on the right here, fell sharply from high levels at the end of 2017. Now, this may have been influenced by the cold weather at the time, and the previous levels were also very high as pigs started to back up as a result of some factory unreliability. Nonetheless, moving forward, we would still expect any increase in slaughterings ahead of the forecast level to be fully reflected in the production figure, with carcass weights rising on the year. So now, if we move on to trade, and um, obviously the difficulties surrounding the import figures make this a difficult area to forecast at present. So the import volumes in this table that you can see include a fresh frozen volume that is estimated based on exports from our key suppliers, which I did explain earlier. Now, because of this, we do not yet have enough data to make a reasonable estimate for our quarter four imports. So that figure and those related to it are shown in red and are still a forecast. Nonetheless, looking ahead, it does seem that we might be at risk of import increased import pressure this year. Now, although our own expanding production will act as a deterrent to imports, this is will have to balance with an increasing production from the rest of the EU also, and their product is generally more price competitive. This is particularly noticeable at the moment, actually. Um, Danish production is also anticipated to grow for the first time in years, and this could be particularly relevant to us as they are our primary fresh and frozen supplier. On top of the expanding continental supplies, consumer demand on the continent is generally regarded as stagnant and the export market is becoming increasingly uh, tight and competitive. In particular, expanding production from the US and Canada will make the global market particularly crowded this year and moving forwards. China will be particularly hotly contested. Although there are some reports that suggest Chinese import demand might pick up somewhat this year, this is because challenging infrastructure within the country can actually sometimes make it more um, viable to import pork than transport their own domestically produced products. However, of course, as with anything related to the Chinese market, this growth is uncertain. And of course, any uh, market share that the EU might be able to gain is at least, in, at least has a similar degree of uncertainty around it. As such, there could be increased pressure on consumption within the EU and we might start to see more pork being shipped to the UK. With bacon shipments possibly remaining around the new lower level, any increasing supplies might be more expected to come from fresh frozen pork or processed products. Exports are also forecast to continue expanding, aided by the increased supply availability this year. Now, although the global market, as I've just mentioned, is gonna be increasingly competitive, um, UK products did actually fare much better than the EU as a whole last year, and this could continue going forward. Now, while the weak pound may have helped, the positive reputation of UK products may have also played somewhat of a role, and this will hopefully help sustain and develop our export volumes this year. So an example of this is our consistent exports that we had to China last year, despite their generally declining import demand. So with both increasing production and a risk of a higher import level, it looks like we will have more pork on the market in 2018. And this could mean that prices remain under the highs of last year, although of course consumer demand developments will be key. Although as I did previously mention, some tightening of supply in quarter two might lend some extra support to the market at this time. So finally now, just quickly, I'll touch on the outlook for production further in the future. And in general, we would expect to see output rising in the coming years, actually, even if there was no increase to the breeding herd, with productivity moving up along with finishing weights. However, on the chart here, as you'll have seen in the uh, previous presentations, there's a range around that baseline forecast, which highlights the potential for significantly higher production, depending on the nature of the Brexit agreement. As the UK is a net importer of pork, 
and with imported products accounting for actually over half of UK pig meat consumption. If EU access to the UK market becomes compromised after Brexit, there is potentially an opportunity for UK producers to capitalise on this, increasing our own domestic self-sufficiency. However, it's important to bear in mind that carcass balance is crucial to this. So, while expansion might help us to meet the demand for popular cuts such as loin and legs, it will also increase our surface of cuts such as bellies and shoulders, which we would need to find markets for if overall prices could be sustained. So this might ultimately limit the level of expansion that can occur. Though I'm sure, um, I'm sure um, there's something funny going on. <laughs> because I'm sure uh, Sarah will touch on this again later. Uh, anyway, that's it for me now. So thanks very much for listening. Look forward to hearing any questions you might have at the end of the session. And next up, we've got Aidan Wright talking about the outlook for the feed uh, market next year and this year.